today the October caddis pupa. Um, these suckers are big. Tying this on a size 10 uh, scud hook. And I'm going to be using a uh, black thread. The uh, thread I'm using is actually uh, 8 0. Uh, it's Montana Fly Company thread. Uh, I like this thread a lot. It's a uh, lace flatter flatter than uh, Uni does. Uh, very little bulk with it. Uh, but with this pattern, uh, you want a big black head on it at the end, but um, you can make a nice little one as well, and it works just as well. So, I'm going to tie in my body material, which is going to be fluorescent orange Antron yarn. Just look at anything that's going to give me trouble, i.e., loose ones. But it doesn't want to be a part of the game. I'll tie them in up here. Tie them in. Just take open turns, work your way back. Bring them on up. Right about there is where you want your body to to stop. A little bit past the point. Maybe a hook eye past the point. About there. The rest is going to be body. Maybe a little less than a hook eye. Um, the rib I put on it is uh, silver UTC and small. Find the end of my wire here. Usually how the story goes, right? Um, with wire on spools, um, I wouldn't bother cutting it. Because most wire, if you just grab it, like I got it over my index and underneath my uh, middle, and just pull on it, it's going to break. You just snap it off. No point in cutting it and dulling out your scissors. But catch your ribbon. Wind your rib in nice and tight. Oh, broke my thread. Went a little too tight. That happens to us all. Start over. When you restart your thread, start up from where you broke at. Grab your tag end. So that you can get it nice and tight again. Tied down. No big deal. Even the best fly tires break their thread on occasion. It happens. Work yourself back up. At this point, I like to keep touching turns and go all the way down to the to the hook eye. Bring them touching turns back. Way to try to level everybody out. Bring my thread to where I want to stop. I'm going to throw in a little half ish. Maybe my thread doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to wind my body. Make this stuff a little wet. It helps stay, stay, keep it together a little bit better. But, uh, push on that beginning part of my finger and my fingernail, flatten that really out. Don't want it real bulky there. You should wind your body up. And you're gonna work it back. What we're gonna do with this is create a taper.
pointy or her. Time I come back, I like to open up the yarn a little more. Do one more open wrap. Back, and bring it back up. Catch my thread. Catch it in nice and tight. And then wrap them down the shank towards the eye. Sniff them real close. And throw it back up. We call them in. We're going to bring our rib up. We kind of rib it. Rib it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Bring it up to your thread. Catch. Broke my thread again. Ay, ay, ay. Don't know my strength this this time here. Put it in. It's another Benny of uh, the Pedagene. See how quickly I recovered. That rib nice and tight. And the thread over nice and tight. 90 degree bend. Bring it down. And then I like to stop a turn before the eye. Fold that wire back. And then run the thread right back up. It's going to help start to even everybody out. Now we're going to put the legs on her. But before we put the legs on her, we're going to make ourselves a nice smooth base. A thread to do hack on. With any soft tackle feather, um, and with the hackling in general, um, for, for the most part, um, the smoother the um, area that you wind it, the feather onto, the better control the feather you'll have. Um, if you want to have a nice, neat looking hackle, collar kind of hack, well then that's a requirement of what you got to do. And I pre-selected a, a partridge feather, dyed brown. I'm going to make sure it's right, yep. I want the fibers to extend back past the body. I'm going to catch the tip in, not right where I strip back, a little bit down on the tip, a little ways. Catch that in, a couple of wraps, tilt them up, snip them off. And I fold, holding the stem in my hand, I'm folding the fibers back and down. And I only want one turn. But the rest is all stem. Bring the stem back on my side so I can catch it in. Tie that stem down. Work my way back. See how our hackle is. Now on these I like the hackle to be to be a little heavy. You can go lighter. I do tie them lighter. What I'll do is uh, strip one side of the hackle feather off, 
one side of the partridge and then tie it on. Um, just make sure you have a longer partridge because as you can see there, um, I couldn't get around all the way with the girth of where I was wrapping it. But this will do just fine. Still catch just as many trout. Not liking the way those ones look, so break those off. I'm gonna just work here for a minute and get cleaned up. Now I'm gonna put on the front portion, the wing casey area or whatever. But I don't I don't go nuts. I'm gonna use some brown seals fur. Adult seals fur. I didn't kill the seal, so don't come after me. I'm gonna wind this stuff on. Seals for you gotta tighten it up as you wind. And the idea of it is that it's all flared out and buggy. Pull your seals for our back. We'll build up ourselves a nice fat, fat fall cat as blackhead. Whip. I know I put a lot of turns for whips on there, but I never had any come on down. So, um, it's basically the fly there, but I like to brush out the seals for a little bit, a little bit of Velcro. This is my fat Velcro pop stick. I got a skinny one, but the fat one covers a lot of area at once. And then we. Put this baby in the water, put this sucker in the water, and see what it looks like. And it's even more uh, impressive if you're not impressed with this. Now, you can uh, put some uh, varnish on the head get it shined up. Uh, I'm going to forego that. Uh, the fish eat it just fine the way it is. But now when this body gets wet it will darken. Um, the black will bleed through a little bit of that thread and uh, it looks the part even more. Gives it a lot of depth. Um, but that's the fly. It's my October caddis pupa or fall caddis pupa. It's uh it's a producer for sure. It's done well for me uh past couple of seasons. Um of course where I'm at we don't really have these bugs. Um but uh, up on the Great Lakes and so forth, uh Steelies love them. Uh I commercially tie and I uh I sell them to people out west. Uh, where this these hatches are dominant, uh, they have great hatches of these these flies, and uh, I get fantastic reports of uh, how effective the pattern is. Um, but that's my October fall caddis pupa. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And I still like the Montana thread, even though it snapped twice on me. But I still like it. Try it out. Check it out. I'm sure you'll like it too. I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out on my blog, www.utahsflycorner at blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.